The last time Jamaica won the regional four-day cricket tournament was in 2012. That was the final time in an era where we won five straight on the trot. Tamar Lambert was a the captain then and Juna Bennett was the coach. Speaking to a stalwart of Jamaica cricket on Thursday night, he said the cricket is on life support and he praised the effort that I'm making in the primary school. However, I was guarded because I know that he is from the Dr. Bennett camp. Now, Jamaica have named their 13 man, their 15 man squad for this year regional cricket tournament. And with us this morning to discuss Jamaica chances of winning their first tiger in 12 years is Andre Douglas and Dwight Chatu. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Happy that you are here. Yeah, morning, morning, Carlton, and morning to the viewers. Morning, Carlton. Morning to all your listeners across the world. Yeah, yes, thank you. And good morning to you too. I forget my manners. Welcome to the show. I'm glad that you are here. It's a good thing that I have Andre and Shatu to remind me to greet you and welcome you to this show as we look at the Jamaica squad for the regional four-day cricket tournament. Gentlemen, first question. Let's start with you, Andre. If you were one of the selectors, would this have been your 15? Um, yeah, for the most part, I think that the selectors have done a, a pretty good job. It is um, a well-rounded squad. It is a very, very experienced squad. So I, I don't see players on the outside that I'd probably want to be on the arm. Um, I'd probably give a look, you know. I think they have done a, a, a good job, and I must commend them for the um, for the selection that they have made in terms of the experience and the roundness of the team. Um, Dwight, you're taught if you were one of the selectors who this have been year 15, is there anybody that was a surprise inclusion or a surprise exclusion? Um, hmm. When you looked at the performances in the in the practice game, um, for most part, you'd see a lot of the players selected themselves. Um, um, for most parts, even though some didn't didn't shine as I, I, would, I would have expected in the practice games. However, um, and 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 I, I, like Andre, I believe that it's a it's 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 a it's a good squad um, based on the players that we have. It's it's definitely an improvement on the squad that we saw that they put out on the field last year. But I think my only my only um, curiosity would be around um, Brian. Um, he didn't perform all that well last year in regionals. And I didn't see that 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 standout performance. Um, I guess maybe people to the first practice game, maybe, but 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 I didn't see that much of a standout performance. And I, I'm not in the know, so I don't know why they have moved away from um from Gordon. Um, maybe one of you would be able to update me, but I thought that Gordon was a was a was a better bowler than Brian, and I'm not sure exactly what the situation is. Okay, sticking with you, Dwight. Blackwood, Bonner, and Minley will be looking to get back into the senior West Indies team. What level of performance from them would surpass the threshold that you would have set to say, yes, they have done enough now to get a record? Well, very, very good question. For each of the three players, I think the threshold that would set would be different. I think the the, 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 the the one who has the hardest task of making the squad, the senior squad, would be would would be uh, Minley. Um, right now, the West Indies bowling unit is 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 has its tail up. It's very um 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 it it it, it, it performed very very well in Australia. There are new players coming in. There are players like Seals who is eager to get back into the mix, and Minley um performed very well. <laughs> Last year, um, and 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 he'll be wondering whether or not he'll have to come in again and bowl and take in excess almost twenty wickets at eighteen apiece. But that's the type of performance I think that he'll have to put up again to to be looking to get his way back into the senior team. With Bonner and Blackwood, is a bit different. Um, these are experienced campaigners, and there are still concerns around 
the stability of the, the, the middle order for the West Indies. Um, I thought that Hodge performed very well, and we all know that uh, Mackenzie was um, had some 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 good knocks in Australia. Came off of that series as as as, as the leading frontline bowler, but there are still question marks about the stability of that middle order. And so um, Blackwood and Bonner would think that they are in with a chance of 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 of, of being recalled if they can 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 put up a couple of high um, high fifties or, 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 or get a century. Um, especially in the first um, um, over the series of these um, and get a couple of centuries over the series of these um, these regional competition and and if they can end up averaging in the forties, um, they'll be thinking that that's enough for for, for 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 them to look at getting a recall because there are issues still with the West Indies middle order. Andre, same question for you. What would that threshold be for these three? Mainly for, for one. Mainly, I think, would have to take something over at least probably say 30 wickets for him to even get a, a look in, you know, because there are several in, in terms of the fast bowling stuff. We, you know, there are several players right now, you know, the likes of Roach, the two Joseph, and there's Shamar Holder, who was, was given a, um, a contract. So I guess he's, he's very much in the mix. So for Minley to get a, a look in, he would have to bowl really, really well, take at least, say, 30 wickets. To even stand a chance of getting a recall as it relates to bonner and blackwood their situation is a little bit different bonner who averages over 30 37 38 thereabouts i think if he if he scores say anyway any um anywhere over say 400 to 500 runs with a few centuries i think that probably you know he'll be looking for get i even get a recall and on on his way to england and so too for Blackwood because Blackwood is quite experienced, and yes, and Blackwood has performed well in England also. So I think if those two, if they score anywhere anywhere over the region of say four hundred runs, they should um very much get a look in to the West Indies team for England. Sticking with you, Andre, and just you mentioned scoring over five hundred runs, but I would just like to say that anyone, any player from any region any one of the teams anywhere in the competition should score over 500 runs judging from what we have done in the past and the aggregate that we have seen from players in the past any player anywhere who scored over 500 runs in my opinion will be on their way to england but sticking with you andre apart from those three that is and mackenzie which other player or players are you expecting to shine who else should we be looking out for in this tournament? Um, well, I'm looking for great things from, from Kurt McKenzie, you know. Yes, done well. I'm looking out for great things. No, I'm saying that apart from Kurt McKenzie and oh. the three before, who oh, else okay. in this Jamaican squad should, oh, for should be Carlos, looking out for? Carlos Brown, I think I've heard a, a lot about this young man. So, I'm, you know, I'm really hoping that he will come out with all guns blazing and, you know, looking out for great things from him. Also, um, the Romain, Romain Morris, who is the wicketkeeper batsman, you know, I, I think he's a pretty, pretty capable batsman. And if he gets going, you know, you know, I think that he could do pretty, pretty well for, for, for the Scorpions. Okay, thank you. Same question for you. Do I chat to the question is on the screen? Should you forget it there? Uh, yeah, who else do you expect apart from those four? Um, in terms of shining, um, and, and, and we're talking regional cricket here, um, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Mansing was able to, 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 to do something that, 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 that catches our attention. Um, he's the, a leg spinning all rounder. Um, we have seen him put up scores. Um, we have seen him get wickets uh, as well. Uh, we know the susceptibility. We know the vulnerability of a lot of Caribbean batsmen against, like uh, against, uh, against spin bowling. So I wouldn't be surprised if if, if he's able to do something to catch our attention. Also, I, I think Derval Green has sort of like flown under the radar, but I, I, I believe that he has been a very capable bowler. I think that he has put up some interesting numbers over the, uh, um, um, last year. 
and I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if he he comes out um, putting in some very some very good performances as well. Okay, thank you, Shatu. And I'm staying with you. This is your next question, and this is also for Andre. Do you believe that any of the five Jamaicans <coughs> returning from the Under-19 World Cup should be drafted into the squad from the second round onward? Okay. Um, in terms of coming from the World Cup, I think that people are thinking maybe Jordan Johnson, Weatherburn, um, I'm forgetting the name of the, 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 the bowler there. Andre can remind me. Deshaun but James. Really, repeat that. Deshaun James. Yeah. But really and truly, I think that these players are not yet at the level to be able to break into the squad. I would have them around the squad to, 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 to get them to get a feel of what it is to be in, in the squad, to be around the squad, to get a sense of what it takes to, 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 to get up and put in um, 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 good knocks during their practice sessions and just get an understanding of what is needed to, to, to be elevated at the next level. But in terms of breaking into the squad, even the 13, I honestly do not believe that, that they have shown me the quality as yet to, 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 um, to, to break into that squad. We saw... We saw Jordan playing in the regionals. I think it was Super 50 last year. And we still seeing that there are still ways for him to go to, 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 to really stand out in, in regional cricket, uh, despite all that he has done at under-19 cricket. He, by the way, did not really have an outstanding um, under-19 tournament. So I think there I would have them around the squad, but not necessarily a part of the 13 or, or even 15, if you want to call it that. Thank you, Dwight. Um, Andre, what are your thoughts? Yeah, but f firstly, I'm, I was a bit disappointed, to be honest, with the Jamaicans who participated in the World Cup, the Under-19 World Cup. I think, you know, we were looking for big, for great things from Jordan Johnson. You know, he failed to live up to the expectation. You know, Steve Wedderburn looked good in a, in a game, I think. But, um... Overall, I don't think they performed well enough to say they should get a look in into the present um, Jamaica senior team, you know. <coughs> if um, if they want to be included in terms, if they want to be around a team to, you know, to see what the, 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 the you know, what it is like for it to be in, in the senior makeup, in the senior team, they could probably invite them there. But to be a part of the squad, so to speak, I don't think any of them is really deserving of a Call up to the senior team. Okay, sticking with you, Andre. Jamaica has not won this competition since 2012, as you heard I said in my opening. That was the end of a five consecutive win under the captaincy of Tamar Lambert with Chris Gale, Wave Lines, I think Leon Garrick. It was a good team. Um, what do you think? Where do you see this team finishing this year? And what would you consider a good overall performance from the team? Well, I see them finishing in, in the top three this year. No, one of the reasons why, for one, they have a very, very good experienced team. A lot of these guys have been around for quite some time now. And I would think that quite a number of them would be very, very hungry. The likes of Bonner and the likes of, of, of Blackwood, hungry to get back into the West Indies setup. Derval Green, Marquino Minley, they are so would um, want to come out and perform well, you know, because they have been around for quite some time. And the next thing is that we're playing quite a number of the games in home conditions, which will be to our advantage. So I think with those two combined, I expect them to at least be in the top three this time around. And, you know, coming, say, at least second would be a very good placement for them. Jatu, Dwight, what are your thoughts? Man, I think Andre put up two very strong points, especially the first one. Yes, they're playing in home conditions, but I think the biggest thing that, that's going for Jamaica is, is the fact that there are a lot of players in that squad right now who are hungry. You're thinking, you're, you're thinking about Bonner and Blackwood. You're thinking about Minley. You're thinking about Mansing that has been invited to an A-team and is trying to establish himself. I, I, I keep having my eye on Green because he, 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 he's, he, um, um, he's not... 
the name that everybody will jump out and say, but he puts in strong performances. And so I think that there are a lot of guys in that squad right now is hungry. We think about young Carlos Brown, who, um, who, who people have been talking about. You know, so I think there's a lot of hunger in the team. It's great that we're playing in home condition. So that, that, that works very well in our favor. And especially coming off a year where we were literally embarrassed by finishing last of the part last year, there's a lot of motivation right now going forward. Secondly, um, I think a squad like the Windward Islands is, 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 is suffering a bit by starting this competition without two of their more well-established batsmen because um, in Athenes and Hodge, they have two players, two, two players who put up some good runs last year who are away on West Indies duty. So that works in our favor as well. However, when I look, if I were to look at the quality of the opposition, Barbados, Trinidad, Guyana, those three names, look as if they have the top three lock. I'd be very surprised if Jamaica can break into that. I'm expecting us to maybe look at finishing fourth. If we can finish top two, that would be like that would be excellent. In fact, if we can finish top three, I think that 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 would surpass my own expectations. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being here and looking at the Jamaica team with me. However, I cannot let you go without asking you about the West Indies playing eleven for the second ODI and the strategy that you would employ. While you think about it, I'd just like to give my opinion and what strategy and my play 11 for this match. Now, first of all, I'm going into the second ODI with only three frontline bowlers, so to speak. Joseph, Moti, and Shepard. Those will be my three frontline bowlers. I am expecting, or I would be asking Chase, Arch, and Greaves. As somebody said yesterday, it is Graves. But I will be asking those three to give me 20 overs among them and go in with Shepard, Shepard, Joseph, and Moti as my frontline bowlers. I'm playing all the batsmen, so I'm going to have Bishop batting at eight. I will be telling my two openers, who will be Otley and Greaves, or Graves, if you prefer, I am saying to them, you need to use your feet to Bartlett. Force him to change his length. Don't allow him to swing that ball because if he's bowling back of a length, the ball will not be able to swing as much as he swung it on Thursday night. So I'm going to ask my openers in particular to be very, very aggressive. Although I know in West Indies cricket, when you there's a thin line between aggressive and clearlessness. There's a thin line between positive and recklessness. But I'm hoping that my batsmen would understand that thin line and that they will be more aggressive at the top, especially to Bartlett, preventing him from swinging that ball. We must move down the pitch to him and get him off his line and length. We saw the strategy that Casey Carty employed I also think that was a good strategy towards him. But then maybe not everybody is capable of using that strategy. Batsmen must be clear in their mind how they are going to play this type of bowling. My suggestion is that you use your feet to him in a positive, aggressive way. But be careful. But you have the license to attack him. That would be my playing 11. That would be my strategy. Otley and Greaves to open. Cartier 3. Open four, Athenes drop down to five, Arch, Chase, Bishop, Shepherd, Joseph, and Moti. That would be my playing 11, and I give you my opinion of what the strategy would be. Let's go to Andre and hear what his strategy would be and his playing 11. Well, firstly, I, I would, um, Wall should sit out this match for me, and Joseph would, would, would come back, right? No, I think that's the. And also, that is the only change I would make, really. That, that's the only change I would make. I would, I would Greaves and, and Athanes, I'd give them another run at the top, right? In terms of strategizing for the Australian Pacers, you know, they have to, to, to take, be more positive. And when I say more positive, you have to 
you have to intent must be shown in terms of how you play the Bartlett and, and you know because he swings it a lot he swings the ball a lot at the beginning so you have to get yourself your feet have to be um you have to use your feet in terms of trying to get to, to Bartlett you know get bat, batting out of the crease if, if the case may, may, may be right because you cannot just allow him to be swinging the ball at, at you like that I I love I like the way how Casey Carty played. You know, he batted for most of the innings. You know, he used his feet pretty well. Um, Shea Hope. In terms of Shea Hope, you know, I mean, he had a, a poor game in terms of the batting the other day. But you know, I expect him to come good this time around. You know, to be more watchful, to be more mindful of the swinging ball. So um, I do expect them to show far more intent and be more positive than what they did in terms of the batting. Than what they did the last time around. Do I? And I, 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 I hope that they, if you know, if they, if they win the toss, they, you know, if they will probably bat second this time around, they see what this. I think they're playing. In, is it Sydney that they're playing this time around? Yes, Sydney at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Yeah, Sydney Cricket Ground. It's a very a, a huge ground, you know, but not as huge as as, as Melbourne, you know. So um, you, I, I don't know what the pitch will be like, but I hope that they will, if they win the toss, that that they will bat second. Okay. Uh, incidentally, as you said, if they win the toss, they should bat second. Uh, I differ on that, but we are all entitled to our, our, our own opinion. Your thoughts, Dwight Chateau, and your playing 11, and, and the strategy that you would employ? Man, I've been running through this playing 11, and um, and, 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 and give me a help as I, as I, as I, as I, as I thought this through, Carlton. Because like you, <clears throat> I'd make an adjustment at the top. Um, I would look at Otley and Greaves um, to open the innings. I'd have Athenes next. I'd go then with, with Hope and, and Carty, Hodge and Chase. Um, uh, three bowlers that I'm sure about, uh, Shepard, Moti and Joseph. No, I wouldn't go and look at Teddy Bishop to pack the side with too many batsmen because I think at the same rate that we had problems with the batting, I thought some of those problems are... Uh, how do I put it? I, 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 I don't think it was for a lack of depth in the batting. And we need to deepen or lengthen the, 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 the batting that we saw some of those issues. Where some of those were just bad decisions, bad shots, bad judgments, bad calls in that game. And I'm expecting these guys to go back in the second game and make, bit, um, and, and make better choices. Um, in terms of the bowling, I have one bowling position that I think I need to fill. And I'm trying to remember who were all the bowlers who were selected. Just remind me, just remind me who the bowlers were. It was Shepard Walsh, Ford Thomas. Shepard Walsh, Ford Thomas, and Moti. Okay, so I'm going with Ford. Um, I, I know some people think that he needs very favorable conditions to be effective, but 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 we li I liked what I saw of him um, from as far back, I think, as the CPL. And, and and what he showed when we had drafted him in the senior team. So I want to stick with Ford and 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 look at pushing um 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 thing there out of the squad and bringing in Greaves. That would be my that would be how I'd look at things. Okay. So to get you correct then, so you will go with Otley Greaves, Carty Hope, Atanes, Arch Chase. Not necessarily yes. in that batting lineup, but you'd also go with Ford instead of yes. Bishop. Shepherd, yes. Joseph, and Moti. Correct. So you take out you take out Bishop to my plane eleven and add in Ford. No, yes, I, I I do not have an issue here. But Dwight, is the gap between the world champion Australia and a team that failed to qualify for the World Cup in the West Indies, is that gap too wide for we even to be competitive, much more to be thinking about winning a match? Wow. Um, I think the gap is, is significant. Uh, whether or not the gap is too wide to be competitive, what we need to keep in mind is that this squad, this white ball squad, this ODI squad, is an improving squad. It's, it's really unfortunate. And I'm still very upset that, 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 that a couple of players who are sure picks for the starting level, including King, um, who has a central contract, may I remind you all, <laughs> opted... Mm -hmm. Um, to, 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 to not tour um, not um, because of other commitments I guess that they had um, however I think this, this, this white ball team is an improving team 
all right and 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 if we can make some more strides i think we may be able to put up some competitive games against the australia actually i think the bigger concern is our bowling the bowling appears to be very weak not very penetrative but in terms of the batting people need to remind people need to be remembered that among our batsmen is one of the the the, 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 the best odi uh, batsmen in the world <laughs> in shea hope and I, I, I won't back down from saying that. All right. So I think that we can put runs on the table if if if, if our players bat according to the plan. And the bigger issue is the bowling. But I think it's an improving in squad squad. So I wouldn't be surprised if we can be competitive in a couple of games with Australia. But I'm not moving away from saying that the gap is significant between ourselves and Australia. Um, Andre Dwight said that Shea Hope is probably one of the best ODI batsmen in the world. I would go further. I would say that he is in the top three ODI batsmen in the world at this time, Andre. Um, the same question for you, Andre. Is the gap too wide? I mean, the gap is, is really wide, yes, but I have no doubt that West Indies, they can, this squad can be competitive. And one of the reasons why I say that is that we have some batters in our team which have been in Australia, the likes of Hodge and Athanese and Greaves. They have, you know, they have in, been in Australia for over a month now. So they have, you know, they're very much have the experience in terms of getting acclimatized to the Australian condition. So I do believe that if these guys, they play, they, if they bat well, we can be very, very competitive. And with Joseph coming back into the team, you know, he's quite, quite a, an outstanding ODI cricketer. And if, you know, the other, the likes of Ford and Thomas can support him, I have no doubt that we can be competitive. But yes, it is wide, but we can be competitive, especially against this Australian bowling lineup, which is not the most experienced of lineups. And thank you very much, Andre. Thank you for tuning in. I'll now come to your comments. Please slash a like on the video and click on the subscribe button. Our first comment here is from... Blair Boy, and he said, I I cannot recall anyone saying what Blair Boy is accusing of us of there. He's saying, I would like to know why you would have a problem with Chadwick Walton. I cannot recall Chadwick Walton's name even being mentioned in in the in the show so far. Can can you recall do I I I nobody mentioned Chadwick Walton? Maybe the call is saying that when Maybe the, the text is, 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 is concerned that we didn't put him as among the, the list of persons we thought would have sh will, will shine outside of the big three. Uh, maybe he expected us to, to mention Walter's, Walton's name, and he thought, by not mentioning his name, we are saying, like some believe Desi Haynes is saying, that he's too old. <laughs> <laughs> and, Andrew, you see, Blair Boy is has an agenda here and think that we have something against against age. But he made this is his final comment that he made. This one. Oh, all of a sudden cricket returns to Jamaica because the CWI management was sabotaging the cricket in Jamaica. When you and others was blaming the government. CWI lying big time. Um, Andre, how do you respond to Blair Boy? I, I, I don't know if anyone here blamed the government. We, we tried to stay out of the politics. Yes, yes. We've never mentioned anything of the sort about, you know, wasting the sabotaging or, or blaming the government. There's nothing at all to that, you know, that we, we that we um actually insinuated. Nothing whatsoever. So I don't know where Blair is getting his, his thing from, you know. We, but we very much welcome cricket back to Jamaica, though, and and and, and I never ever thought that it, Jamaica was once being sabotaged by the cricket West Indies. Never thought of that any at all. Okay, thank you very very much, Andre. Um, Arjun Sharma, who is always contributing, always have an opinion, and never fail to express it, and we love that very much. And he's saying, "This one is for you, Shatu. Why the ODI team?" <laughs> not performing well for so many years. Test and T20 is better, but what's the issue with the ODI team? Wow, very, very, very good, 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 um, good question. Um, I think the issue is balance. 
Um, at this present stage, a lot of the West Indies, West Indian cricketers are better suited for T20 cricket. They are very motivated to do well in T20 cricket because of the money that can be made. We have seen the West Indies win a couple of world championships. And so people would have been buoyed by that and people would have been motivated and encouraged by that to want to be a part of the T20 squad. And there's this greater competitiveness. We have seen the turnout at the CPL across the region. And so there's a lot of interest in, 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 um, in T20 cricket. I think even across the region here in Jamaica, we see a lot of investment um, coming in for the shorter form of the game. So we can understand why T20 has been our best format for several years. Um, we had issues with test cricket, but I thought that during the spell in particular of, um, of Phil Simmons, we saw improvement. Um, we saw some improvement happening in the, in the test team. And while that was happening, Phil Simmons, unfortunately, was as good a white ball coach we saw that we struggled a lot with a with with with, with a fifty over game where you needed to to to, to balance um 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 the, the 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 aggressive intent that is needed during parts of the game and just being steady during other parts of the game and being able to bat for periods. So I think it's an issue of players just being unable to balance the demands. They either go ultra ultra um conservative and they end up falling behind the run rates and they that 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 they're not they're not that they're not running well between the wickets or they're ultra attacking and they end up lose, losing a clutch of wickets. That's that's just my take on it. Andre, we good before I come to you. Good morning, Merrick. Good morning, Sherwin. Andre, Gavin Prasad is saying that the Jamaica team this year looks stronger than the one last year. Do you agree with him? Yeah, yes, I, I do agree with, with, with him, you know. The fact that we have, you know, so many of our experienced players in this in this in the, in the tournament this year, you know, I think that we, we really stand up with chance of being very competitive and as I said before, of being in the top three, you know, with with, with a lot of experience and, and I do think that these players are, are pretty much hungry. I do think we stand a good chance with the experience that we have this time around. Uh, Andre, but Sherwin is saying that experience is not always a good thing and you can only learn from you can only learn how to lose from losers in other words he are saying that you will develop this culture of losing if you continue to pick players who are losing and that experience is not such a good thing how do you respond to that experience persons must actually perform but one of the reasons why i i, I do i am saying that i think that you know we stand a good chance with this experience bunch is that quite a number of them have found themselves out in the periphery in terms of west indies selection so they'll be very 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 much hungry to perform the likes of blackwood the likes of bonner and with young mackenzie now would want to come and stomp his class and other persons and a few and of course we have injected a few youngsters in the team so with the experience with a few youngsters injected, I do believe that we have the potential to do very well. So not just about that we're experienced, but I think that they should be very, very hungry to perform, to find themselves back into the West Indies team. I'm Dwight Sherwin, who is always very biased towards the younger players. He has not eyed that. He's biased toward the younger players. He's here saying that Blackwood and Bonner time has expired. Um, that's a very unfortunate. That's a very unfortunate comment, um, for a couple of reasons. One, this level is regional. It, it, it is, is what we call regional first class cricket. It's the stock from which we'll be looking to select eighteen um, 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 players, and then looking to look at players to get into the senior team. Um, looking at youth is always good, and I think the West Indies Cricket Board has ensured that by including an academy side and including combined campuses, that there are slots for people just by being young, you are able to play regional cricket, just by being young. So I don't think there is a concern about people who are young not being able to, to participate because they're, they're being edged out. However, at the end of the day, you must perform. It's not just down 
to being young and in some people's mind ha, um, there's a lot of potential there you must be able to you must be able to perform and i think definitely for the jamaica team i think players should not be selected just on a one-off knock or just on people seeing them in practice and thinking that oh man they think that this player looks good in the net i think players should be able to put runs bun and blackwood they have been able to put runs out there i'm trying to figure out who is the other player that they believe should should have a sit because I think in looking at at people like uh, Man Man Singh and Brown and Mackenzie, I think there's a lot of infusion of youth in this team. I do think that the selectors have moved away from an experienced campaigner like Andre McCarthy. They have moved away from him and they're looking at putting younger players in the team. So I'm not sure where the con. What I, I'm not sure what's the nature of the concern. There is a mechanism for young players to play regional cricket to combine campuses and the academy side if, if, if they're talented. And the senior team, the senior arm, um, um, the, the Jamaica squad, I think players should be able to meet their territorial team just based on merit and not based on their age. And I think Blackwood and Bonner has something still to contribute to West Indies cricket. Yes, I have my views on it, but this morning I, I'm allowing you guys to express yourself um, Mikel is saying, and this one is for you to all to Chateau. Mikel, and as you see there, MPEG TV is agreeing with you 50-50. He, he thinks that Blackwood still has time, but he thinks that Bonner has expired. I say I have my views on it because for me, it doesn't matter your age, whether you are 1 or 99, once you are performing. And yeah. when you are performing, you are doing better than these um, youngsters that persons are calling for. Why would you pick a youngster over someone who is performing better than them? But I have a lot of views on it. Um, this one is for you. Mikkel, Mikkel is saying here that King should come back and play. We all know that for the last three to four rounds, King will not have any cricket playing. If he doesn't choose to return and play in the regional four-day cricket tournament, what, what would be your thought process on that, um, Chateau? So I'll repeat the last part of your question. If he if, if King, because he will be available for the last four, three to four matches in the regional four-day tournament. He will not have any other cricket playing. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be compulsory, mandatory for King to come back and represent Jamaica in those four matches? And I if he think, not to, what would be your reaction? I think if King... I believe if King doesn't show up for some of these, um, for, 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 for at least two regional matches, I think he'll confirm my own thoughts on what I think he's doing with his career. I think he doesn't have a serious interest in playing red ball cricket for the West Indies. And I think all the things that we have seen being put out, because we have seen, I don't know if it's his management team or his agent, we have seen articles in the paper taking going at length to explain to us that he really has an interest in playing red ball cricket. So why is he not making himself available? And why is he not playing these games? We know that Desi Haynes is impressed by him and wants to and wants him to play red ball cricket. Why but why 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 wasn't he able to be a part of the, the, the test contingent that went to Australia? And know that we now have red ball cricket in the in the region, several rounds of it. If he's not able to make at least two rounds, at least, at least, I'm going to say at least again, two rounds of that, then he'll just confirm in my mind that he really has no interest in playing test cricket. What sanctions should be taken? You know my position, all right? Um, and maybe this is not the place to have the discussion, but we have heard the president of the West Indies Cricket Board go on television to make a and indicate to us that they send 400,000 US dollars per month, equally divided among the territories. That's, mm, last time I checked, that's almost 5 million US dollars. We also heard him announce earlier that the sponsorship across, the re, uh, across these regional tournaments, both Super 50 and, and this one, will amount to 2.5 million US dollars. Now note, this doesn't include academy. This doesn't include um, 18. This doesn't include a lot of other investment that they're making in our regional first class, in our regional cricket system. If we have players doing like what we're seeing here, one, 
I don't believe that players should be given a central contract the way that King has been given a central contract. All right? And secondly, I think the West Indies Cricket Board need to take strong measures to ensure that they're seeing a return on the investment that they're making in regional cricket. Despite what Donny, Johnny Graves wants to say, I think measures should be taken. That, thank you very much, Dwight. Andre Mikel is saying that he thinks that Man Singh should bat higher up in the order. Do you believe that Man Singh should go up in the order? And what position would you bat Man Singh in the order and ahead of who? I don't think Man Singh should bat say, higher than, than number seven, to be to be honest. I, I don't think, although he's a, a pretty capable batter, I don't think he has shown enough to me to say he should be in the top order. Number seven would be, would be, would be the best position for me to, to bat Man Singh. Um, uh, your good friend Christopher Bristol is here saying, Andre, I think West Indies should stick to the test team that they take to Australia. No changes. Let them play a little a while and see what they do. Uh, do you agree with it that more or less this same test squad should go to England? Yes. I mean, more or less, I think you should see the same persons on the, on the tour. Whether you'd have the same 11 playing, that's another question. But I think most of these guys would, would be given a chance, you know, and should be given a chance to go on the tour of England. You know, you, you I mean, depending on how the performances of others are for the regional tournament, you could include others based on their performance. But in terms of the squad to England, I would expect, and I'm expecting to see the majority of these players, these players on the tour to England. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, do you think that Shepard was bowling too short? And Sherwin is also thinking that he, that he will open with Bishop. And he think that Shepard bowled too short in the match. What are your thoughts, Andre? Um, to be honest, I can't say about when Shepard was, was bowling because I was fast asleep at that point in time. So I did not see that <laughs> aspect of the game when Shepard was bowling. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> Yeah, it, it you know it's 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 surprising. Okay, answer the question about but first. Do you think he should bat at three? I mean Bishop? Yes. But at two, the, I'm sure when they say that open Bishop should open, yes. Oh no, 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 no. I would not be a man opening. Not not at all, not at all. I don't think he should he should you know the best if he's gonna play, he would have to bat probably in the lower um in the middle, say six at best. Okay. Um, in response to Randy Stone comment that Shepard was was bowling too short, I must remind him that in the first ODI, Shepard four overs went for 17 runs. That was the best economy amongst the West Indies bowlers. So four overs for 17 runs, that means and 3.25 runs per over are, are there about. But I think it was somewhere there about 3.25 from four overs. So that tells me that whether he was bowling short or full, that he was bowling according to the conditions because definitely they were not getting away his, his deliveries. I think four overs for 14 runs, sorry, 3.5 runs per over. So that tells me that he was bowling according to the condition. So you cannot just come out and say someone is bowling too short. Um, do I do you believe that Athanase should go? Christopher Bristol is saying so. Your good friend Christopher Bristol. No, man. Um, okay. No, let me start by saying that I don't believe Athanase should go. I think Athanase is somebody we need to invest in a bit more. But at the same point in time, I can understand the concerns that people will have of Athanase. He entered. Um, um, international cricket looking quite comfortable. We had no, we have heard about him from as far back as the under 19 level, how well he played. We have, we have, we have seen how he has played at regional. He started okay, tapered up, and then we committed and, 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 and became highly motivated to do well. And we saw how well he performed last year. All right. He's now in the, 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 the international setup. And I think more time and more patience and more work should go into this player. I don't think it is time to drop it. I think um, we need to we, we need to invest in him a bit more because it's such an amazing talent. Yes. MPEC TV, I understand your position. Many persons would agree they wouldn't drop 
they would drop Thomas and Walsh and bring in Joseph, but some would prefer to go with Hotley ahead of Bishop. So I think most persons agree that they would leave out Thomas and Walsh for the second match and that they will play Joseph. Whether it is Bishop or Hotley, though, maybe that's where you will get a disagreement. Um, Andre Samuel Kane is saying that I would not pick Bishop in the playing 11, and that's what we are. That's what we are basically saying. Now, Kirk Amute, Kirk Amute, if Walsh could get a call up for the West Indies side, no doubt if Fabian <laughs> performed well in the Super 50, he should deserve a call up also, even if it's Test Series. Um, Kirk Amute is always a supporter of Fabian Allen. Andre, I want both of you to address this. Let's start with you, Andre. Why is it that Fabian is so distance away from the West Indies team at this time? I mean, to me, Fabian Allen cricket it has it has it has regressed to me. I've seen him playing in the for the past number of series in white ball. I mean, in T Twenty franchise cricket, and it has regressed. His bowling has fallen off tremendously. His batting has been inconsistent. I've seen a few games of him in the SA Twenty in South Africa, and he has looked a shadow of himself. Even yes, even to the point where I've seen seen him now dropping catches. Even his feeling has fallen off. So I think that this young man, Fabian Allen, he needs a lot of work if he's, he's supposed to get anywhere close to the West Indies team. I would even have him trouble. I don't think that Fabian Allen didn't have a difficult time really making the Jamaican team right now, much less the West Indies team. Um, Dwight, he was dropped from the Jamaica Super 50 team last year. Um, how far is he away from coming back from the West Indies team? Has he, has he lost his way? I'm so disappointed. Um... With, 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 with where Fabian Allen's cricket is. And I think um, he had a personal issue. I can't remember if his father passed on and he was very, very close to his father and, 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 and it affected him and he took some time off. I believe that might have happened. But now seeing him back in the cricket, I totally agree with Andre. It's a shadow of himself. I mean, we totally enjoyed watching Fabian Allen. Uh, he was... Uh, electric in the field, he could slap that ball and give you late, late, late order runs. And then he was surprisingly getting wickets when people didn't believe that he would be, he would be able to get wickets in games. So now watching him play, I'm just very, very um uh, disappointed with how much his cricket has fallen off. I think a lot of work has to has to go in has to be put in by him to get himself back. But he is some ways off to being selected in the, to, 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 the, to the West Indies senior team again. I have to agree. Yeah, thank you very much, gentlemen. So Mrs. Cricket Forum is saying good morning. Good morning to everyone. And she's saying, what a delight to have cricket discussion on a Saturday morning when doing laundry. Maybe <laughs> my day is doing so well. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cricket Forum. Um, as we will discuss the Windward Islands team, but today is Jamaica. We have not yet gotten the Windward Islands squad. As the squad release, as we see them, maybe right now a few more have been released, but we will discuss all the squads before Wednesday, the start of the tournament. And Mr. Casanova is saying that I'm so glad they finally picked Mansing. Joe Ryan is making a comment. He said, I have seen Blackwood put his head down and bat in regional matches, but when he's in test cricket, he gives it away. How do you respond to that, Dwight? Then I, I get a few words also from Andre. I'm, 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 I'm in total agreement. And which is why we're saying, look at, at, at Blackwood this year. You, I, I expect to see a totally different player and the player I've seen in the last few test match that was hitting the ball in the air and inviting people to, 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 to dismiss him, you will see a player that will put his head down and bat, and not just bat for a couple of for, 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 uh, for half a day. You'll see a player who will put up big scores. That's my expectation of Blackwood. When he plays regional cricket, and over the, the past few years, he has been highly motivated to do well. Um especially when he was trying to find his way back into the West Indies team. We saw him putting up runs, you know? We saw him having the ability to, 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 to put away certain aspects of his games, uh, of his game, 
that airy drive that we all talk about all the time. And we saw him putting in runs. So 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 I expect him to bat. I have no clue why he appears to have this sort of mental lapse when he's playing in the international game. I I I I have heard they have gone as far as to implement a system to find him when he gets out playing certain shots. Um and I'm not sure what the disconnect is. My opinion is like with this with, with this poster, I think he needs to stick with what works for him in regional cricket at um 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 when he goes across and plays test match cricket. I'm coming to you, Andrea. I think um Dwight has exhausted that, but I'll give you the next question, Andrea, as we're about to wrap up. He, um Mr. Casanova is saying that man can back as high as six. Leroy Log is not is no longer in the country. I think he has immigrated to the United States. And he's saying that Chadwick Walton, why is asking why Walton is a part of the team. And, and he's saying that Chadwick Walton would never again play for the West Indies. But this is from Tyrell. Athanas looks scared this whole tour. Do you believe Athanas is, is scared, Andre? Yeah, I, I but scared, timid, you know, I don't want to know, you know, depending on the choice of words they use, but he actually looked a little bit timid to me. He, he really is, he, isn't, he didn't look as, he's not looking as confident as, as, as he looked when he just came into the team. You know, I don't know the reason for that, but, you know, I, I think that the young man is not as, as confident. He's really suffering in that regard, you know, so I hope that, you know, he will get back his confidence at some point, at some point in time, you know, and when he comes back to play in the regional cricket, you know, but at, at right now in Australia, he, he, he looks a shadow of himself, you know, especially with, um, he's, he's quite iffy, especially outside the, outside the off stump, you know. So I, I do hope that when he comes back to play regional cricket, that he can regain his confidence. And, and, and just to an extension of that, because I love this, I appreciate this comment from Mr. Casanova. And I, I agree with him. He said, we need to give Atanes a good run, just like South Africa did with Kalis. And I would even say, just like India is now doing with um, Gill, with Subman Gill, and just like what Australia is doing with Green. And they are hoping that these players come good. I would do the same for Atanes. I would give Atanes an extended run because I really think he's a class player. And, and I would keep him in the team, Andre. Yeah, definitely, definitely. He, he has shown enough that that he has the what it takes to make it at this level. So you know, I have no doubt that he will come good at some point in time. You know, he's just under a bit of pressure right now, confidence low. But of course, he's deserving based on what he has done in the past. He's deserving of a very, very long run. Yeah, thank you, Andre. And I, I, I coming to you, Dwight. I realize you want to say something, but this is one of the beauty of the community. I love. I love the banter as long as it is respectful. So while Mr. Casanova is saying that Walton will never make the West Indies team again, Travis Pessoa is letting him know that he's not a West Indies selector. That is wonderful. While the champion is saying that he thinks Atanese should move his feet some more. I realize you want to say something there, Chateau. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, please go ahead. I, I thought, um, yes. Well, let's start with the whole issue of, of, of let's start with the whole issue of, of Shadwick Walton. I know there are concerns about his age <laughs> and whether he'll be able to play senior cricket again. But at the, at the end of the day, we're selecting a team to go out there and, and, and win the regional, the regional, not that international test match, the regional competition. And we saw what happened last year. The squad last year lacked experience. You'd question whether or not some of those players were good enough to be on that squad last year. And we came last. And that was embarrassing. And I think time has been taken to look at certain things. One of the things that has to be looked at is that opening slot. That was very weak last year. All right? Some people will think, try Carlos Brown and have him open, which I think is what they did in a lot of the trial matches. And some people will say... Let's go back to an experienced hand like Chadwick Walton and see whether or not we can get some stability up top. We know more than like that they'll have Kurt McKenzie open as well. All right. So 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 I'm not against Chadwick Walton being selected. I don't think you said Leroy Locke has migrated, but even if he didn't, 
I don't think he had put in a strong performance during the trial, during the trial matches that he played in. And um, I think um, 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 Walton deserved um, his, his, his spot in the team. That's my personal opinion on that. On the matter of Athenese, go ahead. No, go ahead, man. Continue. On the matter of Athenese, you know where I am. I think this And player, you see where Charles Taylor is saying that the West Indies should persist with Athenese. This youth has big time talent, all former mm -hmm. player. Give him time. I'm not so yeah. sure about the all format player. I'm not so <laughs> sure about the T20. But yes, Tess and ODI. Go ahead, Shaku. I'm On the issue of Athens, you know where I stand. I think we need to persist a bit longer with this player. All right. It's so, I think, different for bowlers versus batsmen. With bowlers, the issue is them being able to consistently hit particular spots on the pitch for long enough to induce the errors from the batsman, especially at the test level, because you have a very few test matches, apart from the one that you saw down under, where you just seem to be able to just blow people away with sheer peace and stuff. That doesn't happen often. All right, in test cricket, it's a patience game, it's a consistency game, and we know that's the formula for bowlers. With batsmen, the issue is the mind, and... I think there are just a lot of things that's happening right now. I think he has the makings of somebody who can do well at this level. I think right now he just needs to get his confidence up. We see that drop in confidence from him. He needs to be a, li a little bit more selective. We know from before we thought that he went after almost every drive <laughs> that he got. And he's seen and he's getting out to a couple of those shots. Some of those shots are shots that he can leave. But I want to give him the space to try to sort out just that mental aspect of his game and to get his confidence up. And then I believe that we'll see good results from the player. I really hope the West Indies cricket board is, is having somebody just mentor him through this time, just to, 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 to put the hand over his shoulder and just to encourage him. And not just to leave it to him, just to start him with his will. But I think this is the player that we need to persist with. Uh, thank you very much. Mikel, I saw your comment, but it is like when a judge recluse him or herself from a case. Because of my relationship with the, the player that you mentioned, I don't usually discuss that player on the show. You know, I just recluse myself because of a close relationship between who, both. Who, As I who said, you Gavin, who are you referring to? The Jamaica senior player or the West Indian player? As I said, Gavin. Um, uh, we'll be doing every squad. We'll be doing every squad, as I said, Gavin. And so, as soon as those squad has released, I'm in touch with Basil Butcher. So, as soon as the Guyana squad, for example, has released, we'll go through it. So, we'll try our best to go through every squad before before the tournament starts on on Wednesday. Um, Ajuna Sharma is saying that he thinks that the threshold. For batsmen like King O Bravo Banner Blackwood, it must be over 600 runs. He think, and I, I, I somehow I agree. I agree that these guys need to come, need to come good. Um, MPEG TV is big up Travis. I guess they are friends. I want to thank you all for tuning in this morning. Please remember slash a like on the video and click on the subscribe button. And remember that West in this play. The second ODI is starting at 10.30 p.m. Jamaica time, 11.30 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. We will be back with you tomorrow morning with a review of that match and also look at another squad. Hopefully, a number of them will be released today. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Dwight. You may all have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself now. Take care of your loved ones.